music going, but I was having some technical difficulties. Oh, so, it's okay. Wonderful people, what's going on? Welcome to another action-packed episode of Be Her Talk. My name is Stanley Fritz. I am your local IT guy who only knows enough about Zoom to get us on the internet at the stream on Facebook Live. You can follow me on Twitter at Stan Fritz. You can follow me on IG at Stan Fritz. You can follow me on Snapchat at Darkskin Swindle. I only go on there to see if they put the thought filter back, take a picture with said thought filter, then post it onto Instagram. But if you really, really want to talk, Twitter and Facebook are my two domains of full ratchetry. Probably Facebook more so because all the reporters and politicians follow me on Twitter now, so I can't be hood rat anymore. Anyways, what's going on, guys? Hey, guys. So this is Be Her Talk, where we talk race, politics, and culture. We do that all from our very unapologetic perspectives. I'm super happy to be here. If you guys don't know already, my name is Selena Hill. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram, at Miss Selena Hill. And I'm still struggling on, like, a dynamic intro so please just check me out there amazing selena you're such a dynamic and wonderful person like i feel like when you hit that intro i want it like i want it to be everything that you are you know and it's hard because you're literally an award-winning journalist and like on conversations with slim thug and with oprah so like how how do we even introduce you I mean, Slim Thug was definitely shooting his shot with you when he said the Ronies made him want to get married. You think so? (laughs) Sheesh. Yeah, man. Well, now I'm just playing. Thank you for that, Tammy. Can we please find out who you are and why you are dressed like a 2020 version of Little Kim? Because I love that. Titty skin. Like, titty skin all over the screen. (laughs) Um, So my name is Tammy David. I am... Be Heard's problematic fave, self-proclaimed. And today, my problematic stance is that I'm not clapping for healthcare workers every day at seven. I think it's dumb. Instead of clapping, the general public needs to rally behind nurses and unions and other labor efforts to get them the PPE that they need and advocate alongside them for hazard pay and increased benefits. So. That's my problematic take of the day. Um, The reason I'm dressed like an e-girl, like an OnlyFans video girl, is because I am beyond excited today to talk about our main topic, which has to do with sex work, um, the porn industry, and how OnlyFans is boosting as sex workers turn to e-hoeing in order to get that check. But But before we get to that story, um, let's talk about the news roundup, where we cover stories that maybe might stress you out or make you feel a little positive on this rainy Sunday. Um, Today, we're gonna roast the South for reckless endangerment of their citizens. Uh, We'll finally close out the Teddy Riley babyface beef once and for all, and we'll update you on a week of both good news and bad. Um, Let's start with roasting the South. How about that? How about that? <laughs> oh, I'm so here for it. So, like, yes, go ahead. Atlanta and Florida. For real. So oh, just God. so you guys know, CNN is reporting this morning, ready or not, some states are beginning to reopen even as the U.S. closes in on a million coronavirus cases. Stay-at-home orders and business closures in places including Georgia, Tennessee, and Texas are falling away this week, even though a data model often cited by the conservative White House, advises most states to wait several more weeks at least before loosening social distancing rules. So Stanley, I'm gonna start with you because you called this at the beginning of the crisis. What is going on in the South right now? I was gonna say something very offensive, but I thought about Stanley being mad at me and talking to me after the show about not generalizing. So I'll say this. Republicans Republicans don't care about people's safety, and they're also stupid, aggressively stupid. And they're going to kill a lot of people. And unfortunately, a lot of those people are going to be poor people, they're going to be black people, they're going to be brown people, because they don't care. Um, Georgia already has 700 new cases of corona. They open the state back up on Friday. It is going to be a disaster. Am I surprised? No. When you put stupid white men with small penises and lots of power into office, this is what they do. They get people killed. Yo, Selena, Jordan Taylor writes on Zoom 
that it's happening apparently in PA and upstate New York too. I mean, what are some things that you would want to say? Because I know you've been in quarantine the longest. Like, what should we do to make them take it more seriously? I mean, you know, as Stanley stated, I do not think Republicans in particular care about our lives and are taking it seriously. We know, and we've talked about it extensively on Be Her Talk, how coronavirus is disproportionately infecting and killing African Americans. So it is no surprise that they reopened Atlanta, which is the black Mecca and the entire state of Georgia. I mean, Governor Brian Kemp said just a few weeks ago that he didn't even know you can be asymptomatic, meaning that he didn't know you can be carrying the coronavirus and not show any symptoms and still infecting other people. So if he had the audacity to show how his level of stupidity to say that, it's like, I don't even know what to say to the fact that he has reopened his state and now other states are following lead and that are, again, predominantly um, being governed by Republicans. I mean, even Donald Trump has said stupid things like, oh, we're going to be back up and running by Easter. And now Mike Pence, he's saying that, oh, we should be good by Memorial Day. They're not taking it seriously. We don't have leadership in other countries and even in other states, like in California particularly. They were one of the first states to, to give a, a, a statewide mandate to lock down. And because of that, that state has flattened the curve and basically they're having better results than other parts. What's happening in Georgia, this, the number of infected cases and deaths are continually rising. And at this point, they're, pro they're putting profits and the economy over people's lives. And my question to them is, if you kill everyone in the state, what, who's going to work to, to basically keep capitalism alive? Because let's, I mean, I get it. They don't care about black lives, but they're dependent on black workers. Now, if black workers don't have the testing and don't have the PPE to keep them safe, then it's going to collapse. So I don't know what the thinking is. There's no leadership here. Thanks for the analysis. Stanley, you're on mute. <laughs> I just want to highlight something that um, I think Jasmine said on here. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm just going back. Yeah, Jasmine Cross goes, let's not forget that Atlanta has a high HIV rate and this virus attacks your immune system. So if you have HIV, we can all imagine what will happen to them. I see Tammy doing a dance of emphasis, I'm assuming. <laughs> yeah. it's not, not yes, a dance. high I emphasis, about that, deep respect. <laughs> That's kind of wild. And, and meanwhile, Andrew Gillum is out here. Listen, to Andrew, nobody cared that you was gay. We all knew. Like, we need you to come be governor because this man, DeSantis, is a serious problem in Florida. <laughs> but how bad do you think it's going to be when, when things really hit the fan in those places? Will it be as bad as New York and Georgia or Florida, or are they going to be able to get away with this? Mm. Man. Well, let's hope at least that there are people down there fighting against this and that once the statistics roll in about people getting reinfected that they'll kind of sober up wise up and shut shut shit down again so that we can be safe well uh, just really quickly it's up to people to make sure that they're safe right and i know that it's harder it's easier said than done because if your business has reopened and your employer is demanding you to work a cash register or to work, the, you know, to, to host or greet people walking into your establishment, it's going to be really hard for you to say no, because you know, you need that income. But I do think that if there, if anyone has the privilege to stay home and protect themselves, please do it because this is a public health crisis. And you're not just protecting yourself and your community, you're, you're protecting all of us at this point. Well said. Can I give y'all some positive coronavirus news, though? Because I feel like everything is so heavy. Your hair? That's positive. It looks great. <laughs> Thank you. That's so, you know, I feel so blessed by you guys today. Thank you. I really, like, tried my best. Um, anyway, some positive news. Earth Day was Wednesday, and according, I know it was kind of overshadowed by everything happening, um, but according to carbonbrief.org, coronavirus is set to cause the largest ever annual fall in co2 emissions whoa and that's pretty good yeah i know like i've been seeing that flights are down like in the 90 percent cars are mostly off the roads in major cities and production is way way down so 
Um, Stanley, do you think that this is sustainable at all? Like, do you think that when this is over, we can like continue? I mean, listen, I saw a pair of tens roaming freely on the subway. The earth is restarting. We're in good shape now. No, I mean, this is exactly what we need. We needed to lower our carbon footprint. And that does us good because if the carbon footprint is lower, we're doing less damage to our air quality, to our water quality, which makes it easier for everyone to breathe. But the real like danger in climate change is, I mean, it's outside, but it's also inside. People spend 90% of their time indoors and in the black and brown and poorer communities, that's where you, the, you get the highest level of pollution. So you want to talk about the East Bronx, where like the, they have the highest volume of people with asthma in the country, the East Bronx and East Harlem. A lot of that is not just by being next to a highway. It's also you go indoors, they have leaks, they have water infestation, they have mold, they have all these issues in their buildings that landlords are not required to fix and they're not being penalized for that aggravate respiratory issues. So I'm really happy for what's happening outside, but we've got to do the work inside as well and get Flint water. Yes, yes. Selena, so yes. I know both of y'all are vote blue no matter who, but I want to yeah. ask Selena this because uh -huh. specifically, Stanley, you're an organizer and I want to hear like Selena's perspective because I know she's supporting no matter what and like doesn't really do a lot of policy-based stuff. Selena, from your perspective, like, do you think there's a way to coax Joe Biden into endorsing the Green New Deal? Because right now he calls it like the crucial framework of his plan. But in light of where we are with emissions during coronavirus, like, I feel like there's a path forward there somehow. Absolutely. And I think we can do that. Joe Biden has already proven himself to continue to lead more so to the left. And it's because of uh, Bernie Sanders and young progressives like yourself, Tammy. I think that if people like you continue to raise your voice and say like, look, I'm not voting for you, Biden, unless I feel like you are going to authentically and genuinely represent my interests, then, I, you know, and I'm not going to go to the po polls or else, then absolutely. Joe Biden, you know, even though he has a stronghold on the black vote, um, and, and maybe some more conservative leaning Democrats, he still needs to rally young people. He still needs to make sure that progressives are going to support him. And one of the, uh, the main things on their agenda, if you ask me, is to make sure that they can uh, sort of tap into Bernie's base, right? Bernie had so much energy and, you know, social media and at his rallies, they need that to win. So mm -hmm. absolutely. And I think that we have to continue to make our voices be heard. I do want to say that we have a comment on Instagram Live, um, someone says Stanley looks like he's homeless. But but hold on, <laughs> hold on, that that wasn't the that wasn't the comment I, think I that was Lena. That was Lena. No, that, that was not Stanley. No, so your friend said you look homeless. But hold on, someone says so. Ian Harris says I work in Atlanta. I'm here currently. Mayor Bottoms has continued to tell the residents to stay home in spite of Kemp's lifting lifting of orders that goes back to our previous conversation she might be biden's Georgia. vice president that's why she got it you know yeah you know i mean Yo, but but she might be biden's biden's so tell me if biden picks keisha um bottoms as her vice president would you vote for him so mm. all right i can't answer that but i'm gonna I'm I'm talk to the <laughs> why point why can't you answer i'm gonna talk to the point that you mentioned selena and also that jordan mentioned in, in the chat i'm gonna use his commentary to answer that jordan writes i think even if you're blue no matter who don't tell him till later to scare mm. him to moving further left if biden don't pick a progressive vp he's in trouble and that that is why I'm so adamant on not voting. Why am I going to promise him my vote when he won't even endorse the Green New Deal? Mm. Like, my kids won't have a planet. I might not ha have a planet. So why yeah. am I going to vote for him? Mm. And I think if he were to pick Keisha Bottoms as a VP, it would yeah. be a good step. But let's talk policy, baby. You're going to cancel these student loans? Because mm. I I might lose my job. And then how am I going to pay Sally May back? Only Let's fans. talk progressive policies if you want the progressive vote. Real quick, can I just say this? I'm not down for tokenism. If he's just going to pick a black woman VP to become his little token, no. Like Tammy said, we need to see how he's changing policies. I'm all for Stacey Abram, Mayor Keisha, or even Kamala Harris begin, becoming his VP, but he has a long way to go when it comes to representing in particular black women.
Agreed. But what if he picks like Amy Klobuchar, Selena? That's Damn, a white know, lady who also ran for president uh, and was losing. For those of you who don't I, know. look at this point, anything is better than Trump. Look at what look at his leadership in the coronavirus. Like he uh, literally he literally applauded Governor Kemp for opening up the states before he walked back the comments twenty four hours later. He oh, told people, wait. He, he told people to ingest Lysol. I think yeah, that's all like, we need to know. <laughs> Yo, hold on, real quick. For those of you who are watching on Zoom and Facebook Live, do you know or have you heard of anyone trying to inject Lysol into their bloodstream to fight the Ronies? If so, you need to tell us because we need those jokes. I need that for my mental health, please. <laughs> Look so at please. me. I need joy. <laughs> So if you know anyone who's certifiably stupid, please contact Stanley Fritz right away. Wait, wait. Stan Fritz. J- Janera Johnson says he did not tell people to inject Lysol. <laughs> Janera, so in, just in the comments real quick, what did he tell people? Because I saw him saying that on TV, like, you know, we've heard if you inject some bleach or Clorox or Lysol, that's what can do it. And then Bleach and a couple of other companies had to put out a statement saying, "Yeah, you don't, don't, don't do that. Your man's man's is bugging." <laughs> but yo, can we like listen? We know Trump is crazy and stupid and also racist and smells and has a small penis and has small hands and paid for his wife and doesn't deserve to be president or maybe possibly live. But I'm not judging people's lives <laughs> here. You know those things. But can we move on to something a little bit yes, lighter? Please, okay. Michael Jordan. Mm. Yes. Oh, that's right, Jamie. Jamie. This is the no, 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 segment. Lead this conversation, please. I've been meaning to hear about it. So this is a sports ball segment that I usually do once every six weeks or whenever Tammy and Selena aren't paying attention. Pretty much, Jordan gave, like, unfiltered access to himself and the Chicago Bulls in 1998, his last year in the league. We don't, we don't talk about the Washington Wizards years. Those don't count. And they followed the whole team for his last championship. And then they just held it in archives for years. And ESPN finally released it last week. And it's brought up such conversations as, was Jordan in the 90s bigger than Beyonce today? Mm. And who's a better player, Michael Jordan or LeBron James? But it's a really great documentary. Scottie Pippen was getting robbed. He made, he got, he signed a five-year contract for $18 million. Meanwhile, people was getting paid $70 million over the same time period. And yeah, it's a really good doc. You guys got to watch it. But Selena, for you, the yes. Beyonce, our Beyonce correspondent, do you think Jordan was bigger than Beyonce in his time? Absolutely. I will say this. Like, I'm not even a sports fan, but my grandmother and I were watching the 1996 playoffs. And those were some of my most cherished moments of cheering for Jordan and Pippen. I remember, um, what's the guy with the crazy hair? The colorful hair? Dennis Rodman. Yeah. Like, I still remember. Like, that was like the golden era for 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 basketball for so many of us um obviously i haven't watched it as intense intensely as from back then but i appreciate michael jordan what he did for the game of basketball how he made this like a global phenomenon and how he took uh the league and he took that and he signed so many brand endorsements and then he went on to actually buy teams and show us what ownership looks like in this space so Michael John Michael Jordan is a cultural phenomenon, and I want to add that the Last Dance, the documentary that we're talking about, it actually viewed that actually had the most highest views in ESPN history. Uh, the two episode premiere averaged six point one million dollar viewers. So uh, salute to ESPN for moving up the premiere from June to April um, because number one, I think it was a smart move since everyone's locked in, and number two. Sports fans are yearning for anything. I think I've, I've read accounts where a lot of you guys are, like, watching old games on, like, YouTube and stuff yes. like that. So, like, we, we, need to give, we need to give our sports fans something, some type of light in this, in this uh, huge crisis. I am definitely watching old sports highlights with a tear coming down one single eye. Um, <laughs> a thug tear? Uh-huh. Why? No, nah, no thug tears. Just straight up Stanley tears. Um, no, but you're valid, though. And for what it's worth, I've been hearing really good things about the Michael Jordan documentary. So, you guys, it's called The Last Dance. It's a 10-part series. Go watch it. Show us some love. Jordan's a legend. He deserves it. I'm going to edit this part out because he's not paying us. But <laughs> <laughs> Valid. Okay, on to more, like, relevance. 
pop culture stuff. Um, let's wrap up the Teddy Riley and Babyface debacle because the it finally happened. They faced off, and I gotta know who won. Selena, who won? Um, look, I watched it. Um, I was very satisfied after watching it. However, you know, when you pin someone like Babyface and Teddy Riley, it's hard to say who won. I think statistically, if we look at their track records, Babyface has more global records and his records, he has more number ones. Um, and his records have actually expanded much further than Teddy Riley's. However, for someone like me, who's a fan of New Jack Swing and someone who's a fan of like 90s R&B, you cannot ask me to pin Guy against like some of Babyface's um, produced, like some of the um, records that he produced and sang himself. And like, you, I don't know. So like for me, it was like, it was a matter of preference. I can't say Selena? one person won. I was just happy that they finally were able to get over all the technicals and have this moment for the culture. All I got to say is this. Mm. Yeah, boy. Come on now. <laughs> That's my song. I know, exactly. Song. Exactly. You know what? Somebody, I'm not even going to say what I was going to say. That's all you need to know about that debate. Babyface won, and he did it pettily by playing the guitar. <laughs> okay. Right. So yeah, he did. He did. Oh, let's get to business. So I since just, we have yes. Michelle with us now, um, we're going to cool. start to wrap up the News Roundup segment. Just want to throw the last stories you guys' way. Um, breaking news through TMZ, Kim Jong-un might be dead because of a botched heart surgery. Um, TMZ broke the news first. Selena, I know you were not happy that TMZ broke the Kobe story because of the way they did it. Um, what do you think? Because it just, it just came out and it's crazy. Oh yeah, no, that is crazy. I think that let's continue to follow this story. I think that it's important for us to check with credible news sources. Like I'm waiting for CNN to break that news and New York Times and the Washington Post just to make sure everything is credible. And I think that that drastically changes um, the conversations that we've been having with North Korea um, and, and, and just, you know, even in the midst of a pandemic, I, I don't know. It's, that's a lot to unpack. I don't yeah. even think we have time to nope. think about, to even talk about the consequences of something like that happening. Word. And then our last story, Stanley, I'm going to shoot this one to you. Um, the House just passed the latest round of stimulus package. And in it, there's funding for hospitals. There is a way higher budget for smaller businesses, which the budget got eaten up last time. Um, and then there's funding for more testing. Do you think New York is going to get the money that we need? Because I'm stressed right now. Um, there's going to be another stimulus package, more than likely, after... Congress gets back from recess and more states are going to be negotiating their budgets, their state budgets, and they're going to need bailouts. So I expect a bigger stimulus package to be um, negotiated and it's going to have um, infrastructure in there. And infrastructure, for those of you who don't know, when you translate that from government to English, it means drop money into states and hope they spend it on stuff. And that is New York's opportunity to get things. Right now, Governor Cuomo is saying New York has a $10 billion budget shortfall and that he wants to cut education by 50%, he could very easily raise taxes on the rich and not do that. But, you know, the Governor Cuomo, he doesn't want to do that because the rich are his direct constituents. But between the federal stimulus package that needs to come down to take care of not just New York, but also the other states, and the opportunity to actually tax the rich, because we should, um, I'm hoping that there is some light at the end of the tunnel if people are smart. We'll see what happens. Word. So I'm going to wrap up the news roundup, guys. I'm sorry about the sudden end, but we just really want to get to the main topic. So if you have any comments, questions on any of these stories, especially the ones that we just brushed through, follow us at The Herd Talk on all social media platforms, and let's keep the conversation going. Selena, why don't you, or Stanley, why don't you tell us what's up with this story right now? Yeah, no problem, guys. So we're switching gears now. Then we get into the main topic. So for those of you who have been stuck in the house like me, I think we've all had an opportunity to try out new things and to watch a lot of TV. It's also been a time where folks have been really lonely. Um, if you have your own place, you don't have a roommate, you don't have a partner, things can be really lonely. And like most Americans, most people, like sex is something that people think about a lot. So much so that people have been looking for new ways to engage. 
And because of this pandemic and because of the shutdown, the places where sex has really gotten more popular are some of these cam profiles that some people have been using for the last couple of years. So for those of you who don't know, as 16 million people in the, in the United States have applied for unemployment benefits in the last three weeks, a rush of people have also gone and created OnlyFans accounts so they can be content creators and also signed up for and paid for OnlyFans accounts so they can receive exclusive content from cam workers. For those of you who don't know um, what a cam girl or a cam worker is, this is someone who provides exclusive usual sexual content via cam work using platforms like OnlyFans, Cam Soda, and Visual Network. Because of this, we've seen a lot more stories about these workers on social media, including from DJ academics who, who bash a sex worker who uses OnlyFans and was able to buy her first house because of it. And we've seen a lot of people bashing the people who use these platforms to make money, calling them the usual names, sluts, saying that they don't have any morals, et cetera, et cetera. We're not surprised by any of this. But as we're seeing a rise of income for some of these workers, we're also seeing people who are losing out because of the new influx of people who are creating their own accounts. And there are some who are saying that this one form of sex work is undermining folks who don't have that access and are blocked from those spaces in general. So today we're gonna to be having a conversation, not just about OnlyFans and that platform and platforms like it, but a deeper conversation about sex work in general. And to help us with that, we have a very special guest on the line. We have Michelle Hope. So Michelle Hope is a dedicated sexologist, educator, and activist with a master's degree in human development and extensive postgraduate training in sexuality. As a veteran speaker, Michelle has over 15 years of experience delivering impactful informative lectures and training across the nation. She believes as through her work in marginalized urban communities and has provided with her deep insight and comprehension of the holistic implications of sexuality on one's life. I'm really excited to have Michelle on the show with us. Um, I, I had a chance to talk to her a couple of months ago on Let's Not Be Trash, so I'm happy to have her here. Michelle, welcome to the show. Hi, how are you? So far, so good. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm just hunkered down <laughs> in, uh, in my apartment, you know, hunkered down. Just I hear that. Getting used to all these Zoom calls, but it's no problem. It's yes. no problem. Thank you for joining our Zoom call today. We're happy to have you. And I know mm -hmm. our folks are happy to have you on here as well. Um, so just to kind of get us started, I'm going to throw the first question um, to, the, to the panel and go to Michelle. Um, Selena, have you heard of OnlyFans before? No, I didn't. You guys know, honestly, I really were, I wasn't paying too much attention to it until um the pin i'm not lying someone just put a comment and saying she lying no i'm not like i'm telling y'all like I, because of the pandemic and everyone talking about it but the thing is like normally like i'm pretty much on the go and you know I, i'm pretty much like just working in my own space and i haven't really been exposed to you know a lot outside of that so no but now that we are all hunkered down. Like Michelle just said, you cannot escape the OnlyFans conversations. In fact, I was interviewing a financial expert for my job and he gave some financial, uh, while giving financial advice, he talked about investing in OnlyFans. And I'm just like, look, it is inescapable at this point. So I'm happy we're having this conversation on Be Heard Talk. Yeah, um, just real quick so folks are very clear about what OnlyFans is. OnlyFans, like Cam Soda, is a streaming app that folks can subscribe to in order to get exclusive pornographic content. So you pay for subscriptions for individual people and then you can give tips so that they can do it like I can't hear Stanley. Your camera cut, or your mic cut out. Oh, sorry, can you guys hear me now? Yeah. All right, so Cam Soda, you do through tips. You might tip somebody $10 to take off their shirt or $15 to dance, et cetera, et cetera. So, but that's not how fans only works. No, no, I was talking about Cam Soda. Okay. Yeah, OnlyFans is subscription-based, and then you can also purchase more things than the person you subscribe from, like, once you've subscribed. But, um, Michelle, I just want to get it to you now. So, like, we're talking about OnlyFans and these camp profiles. Have you heard of them? What do you think? I mean, uh, uh, OnlyFans has been around since about 2016. And while, yes, it was spearheaded by um, amateur porn performers, uh, also, people that fitness trainers have started to get on there, as well as yoga instructors. Um, and now we're starting to see celebrities. Here's my perspective on this, is we have to remember that technology, like, and how technology moves forward and how we get some of these things, it usually comes out of the sex industry. 
that's uh, where we see the most rapid growth and the new ideas around IT kind of spring from porn spaces. Uh, so it doesn't shock me that people would um, flock to this during this time. However, I think it is important to remember that once you put something out there in the world, it can really have a dramatic impact on other spaces of your life. Not to say that I have in problematic. I think you want to do camming, great. You want to do OnlyFans, great. Be prepared to get some or potential backlash from community as they might not feel like it's appropriate. I'm not saying it's not. Child, do what you want to do. Just know once it goes on the internet, it's out there. It's out there. <laughs> <laughs> I want to bring Tammy to the conversation. Tammy, um, thoughts on OnlyFans and response to Michelle if you have one. Michelle, honestly, you are vibes right now. And I'm literally thinking about this as I like flash my tatas on this like Zoom call for the radio. But you know what? It's okay. It's part of my brand image. Um, <laughs> right. So, so I've heard of OnlyFans um, because I'm a huge like internet person. I love like the Twitter scape or whatever. So I've heard of it through like e-girls and Instagram influencers. Um, I want to speak to Michelle's point specifically because I spoke to two of my sex worker friends this weekend in preparation for this conversation. And just to introduce y'all to who I'll be talking about today, there's Male J who is a male cam worker, and then there's female J, who is a high-end escort. Um, female J, when I asked her if she had an OnlyFans, um, because obviously she can't work during the pandemic, she said, no, I'm not, to Michelle's point. I would have to show my face, which I don't want, still hoping for law school. I think OnlyFans is more for like Instagram influencers and stuff like you would make money off of with more of a following. Otherwise, it's no different than being like a webcam girl, which is already plenty of people. Sex workers use more webcams to do sexual things, which might follow you. And then she goes on to say, OnlyFans really makes sense for those already with an existing following who can get away with showing or doing more than someone who is an in real life sex worker. So I thought it was interesting you brought that up, Michelle. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, here's the thing. I have friends who are sex workers and a lot of them don't want to be publicly identified as a sex worker, right? They're not in it to like build a brand. They're in it to work. And oftentimes people that are in that industry, some people are out and that's great and that's wonderful. But I think for certain people, they create boundaries. And, and the interesting thing about OnlyFans is it's literally a paywall around your content. So you have to produce content. It's all the time, all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because we come from a society where people are instant gratification. So you might have fans sending you emails throughout the day, making requests, and that is actually like continuing. Whereas some sex workers, they go to work, they do their job, they go home, they live a lifestyle, or they fly out for a weekend to be with a client. And then they come back to their, whatever it is, to them it is a job. What I have picked up on from OnlyFans is it is a lifestyle because you're having to be engaged with your, um subscribers on they want instant 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 and for people that are into that more power to seems like a lot of work to me seems like i mean i struggle on my own instagram page <laughs> to put up content regularly so i can't imagine like the good for them, good for them. Yeah. i have more power to them Selena, what do you say to critics of OnlyFans? I know a lot of people have been criticizing some of the cam workers, particularly OnlyFans in the hip hop community, because, um, well, like I said, that DJ Academics post, I know they talk about OnlyFans a lot on the Joe Budden podcast. What do you mm -hmm. say to people who've been critical of OnlyFans workers? Well, I'll say this um, people who are criticizing just the women, that's extremely hypocritical, right? And I'll preface this by saying, like, I grew up in a very socially conservative family, both sides. And that's literally who I am. I'm unapologetic about my faith. I'm unapologetic about like who I am. Regardless of that, that criticism towards women is misogynistic, no matter how you look at it, especially women who are using this as a financial resource. Look, 22 million people are out of work right now, 28. 
Um, that's the reason why the accounts are growing and the subscriptions because people need to make money. They need to have an income. And in fact, OnlyFans has been, as a company, they've been marketing to um, people who worked at McDonald's and other low wage workers because they know that they're out of work. So I think that if we put it in a, a, a if we look at it from a, that perspective, hopefully we can empathize a little bit more. And but however, that criticism is not valid at all. I think other criticism of OnlyFans is definitely legit. Okay. There's other parts that I would agree. There's there's other criticisms that I actually agree with. Well, like so. I see OnlyFans and some of these campsites and sex work in general as a way, like, to bring in money. I don't think anyone would, like, br say that it's a glamorous job or something that, like, you know, mm -hmm. that, that's, a, like, their first choice. But it's an opportunity to, to bring in money and take care of yourself. But there's a lot of anger and backlash, particularly towards women when they do this. Mm -hmm. Michelle, where does this come from? Well, I think that, I think, first of all, uh, the patriarchy uh, but I also think that there is just some confusion about what it, people have a lot of shame around sex and sexuality, right? People become embarrassed and become uncomfortable around conversations. And we have this kind of respectability politics. I think that people can do what they want to do and make money how they want to make as long, as long as it's between two consenting adults. But as far as the backlash, maybe it's people being haters. I don't know because they're not, they don't have the balls to go out there and do fans only. I don't know. Or only fans. I, I see. I, but for me, I think the bottom line is, is that there are different levels of sex work, right? Uh, I have gotten myself in hot water before trying to umbrella sex work as all one thing or, and then I've gotten myself in trouble before trying to say it's many different things, but just like sexuality, is on a spectrum. I think sex work is on a spectrum. I would agree that fans or only fans is much better for influencers. And then the influencers, because they need a larger following to get a few people to want to be able to pay, pay consistently. A couple things that come along with that. That is like the girlfriend experience of a lifetime. Because again, I've done some research. People have to engage with their following so much that it really is not the same as a sex worker who's at um uh like outdoor or indoor sex work like a uh, dancer when you go to a strip club right and you are paying money to get in paying money to tip the dancers paying money to the bar you're tipping out a whole economy i think some things people get kind of upset with things like only fans is it's one economy if i go to the strip club i'm i'm putting money into a full economy not to say that only fans individuals aren't paying taxes because they are but this tax structure is very different and it does not grow an economy the same way stripping grows a bigger economy right now when you are a sex worker that might go see a client for the weekend and get paid that's a private thing you're not putting it on front street like hey i'm making money off this dupe right <laughs> it's an arrangement when you're doing the only fans you're like hey everybody get this get come and get access to me but i'm going to continue to advertise in a lot of different ways so people i think are upset about that maybe i mean i'm not in people's heads i can just tell you what i understand it to be i think people need to be careful if they're hopping into this as oh, I need money right, right now. Let me hop into this because you may not get into law school. You may not uh, get that job you want. And somebody like your cousins, baby daddy's father, friend, you know, from the barbershop might see that. And that could be awkward next time you in the bodega, but whatever you want to do, it's fine. Just know everything has something else with it. And I Michelle. apologize if I just rambled there. No, that was perfect, Michelle. I want you to know Darnell B said you are shooting from the logo right now. Just keep handing you the rock. Selena, yeah. I know we got some comments on Facebook. You want to share those? Yes. So Evan Mastronardi, who's one of our correspondents, he says, dudes like naked women until they take control of their bodies. He followed that up by then saying, uh, until they use their bodies to their own economic benefit and not just for male pleasure. Thank you so much right. for that comment, Evan. Tammy, what do you think about that comment right there? Because I know we, we we had a long conversation about OnlyFans on our show yeah. call on Thursday night. Yeah, uh, we, we, we did. And 
Michelle, you giving me life. I so rock with you how you being here because like your perspective is just so like fresh and you're really covering a lot of ground that, you know, me and Stanley talked about covering in this show. I didn't want it to be really only fans based because like you, you know, I'm thinking, well, sex work is a really diverse industry and yep. we can't possibly speak to all of the different points just from this perspective. But, you know, I got a plus one to Evan's point. Like, I think that's the number one reason, misogyny and patriarchy, that there is shame and stigma around OnlyFans and around women who use OnlyFans to make money. I think it's the same in the sex work industry. Like, men like women and they like objectifying women, but somehow if we do it for our own benefit, it's kind of like disrespectful, you know? It's like they are the ones supposed to be doing that. So I think that's the main reason. But so I do want to say this, Tammy. I want to shout shout you out what you're saying. I think there is some of that. But I also think that there are the same men who are publicly shouting, you're a slut, you're a whore, you're a freak, are yep. the same ones who behind the bedroom is like, spank me, mama. <laughs> so, be bad. so because it's this idea of um it's not just patriarchy it's toxic masculinity and how we perpetuate that wait can you talk about that real quick just like um, toxic masculinity for the folks listening toxic masculinity is when um you first of all masculinity is not bad it is be, when it becomes unhealthy is when it becomes violent and and unsafe a lot of there are feminists out there who would disagree with me and say that all masculinity is bad. I will not so I will not ascribe to that because I love the masculinity in me, but I'm not going to use that in a space of power to to yield power and oppress somebody. When we think about toxic masculinity, it's this idea of perpetuating um, masculinity in a violent nature, especially against women. Now that being said, um, the other thing is. There are a lot of misogynistic men out there. And I read an article about a woman in Indiana who was a male in her space as a mechanic, got, got had a fans only page, more power to you, and then was fired because people at the job found out about the fans or only fans. I keep calling it fans only, only fans page. I do too. And it's cause it's interesting, anyway. So she was harassed at the job by coworkers. She was harassed online. And I felt, I feel bad for this person. She didn't understand why the auto dealership was getting rid of her and not the men. And I'd like to speak to this on a couple things. If you're advertising on your Instagram, everybody's gonna know. Two, listen, honey, I get it. You don't wanna be, um, fired for your job and you might be like this is misogynistic you can't co-brand the two you can't have on your instagram page oh i'm the first mechanic at the bob Rorman automobile dealership i'm about to be a master mechanic and then in the next one be like come to my fans only page that's cross branding don't do that okay don't do that and then also it, um this woman took pictures in her uniform oh Oh. oh yeah, so she's making the company look bad. Oh, well, not look bad, but like oh, no. why, is it, why is it a bad thing? Why is it a bad thing, Selena? I think society tells us it's a bad thing. No, nope. I... it's not about society. That's not about my brand image. So listen, just like Tammy was like, my boobs out is my brand image. Her in the turtleneck right now might not be her brand. So if if I come to her and I say, here, girl, I'm gonna put you in this turtleneck on my fans only page. And then her brand manager of her personal brand was like, whoa, 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 honey, where was your titties? Because your titties is your brand. Am I getting that right, Tammy? Yeah, yeah but no. I kind of disagree, though. I kind of disagree because I think, I like to think that humans are infinitely complex and sex yeah. is just one part of a person's life. I do agree with you that if you're trying to build a following like on OnlyFans, you can't let it interact with another job. But that's the same thing if you work in a finance firm and then you work in politics. You are not allowed to let those cross. There are like no, that's my point. ethical no. rules about that. So I fully agree with you on that. And it's not right. It's, it's, it's absolutely not right. You guys know I am very liberated when it comes to sex and sexuality, and I encourage it. Yet I have always had a day job where I have to be more mindful. And as much as I would like to have my breasts up on the shelf, <laughs> clean it out, looking good, girl, looking good, that would really compromise 
my ability and my access to get money in other spaces. And we have to really understand that that is a real thing. And we have to stop being so sensitive and saying, oh, this is about my sexuality. No, this is about these two brands. It's oil and water. This brand and this brand don't go together. Now you want to be over here in this brand? Cool. Cool, cool, cool. You want to be over here in this brand? Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But right now, these two don't mix. Uh, Stanley, Selena, is, is what I'm saying, Tammy, is what I'm saying making sense? Absolutely. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I 100% agree. I want to bring it back to Selena, actually. Selena, I know you had some a comment you wanted to bring up, and we haven't heard from you in a bit, so the floor is yours. Plus one to everything Michelle and Tammy have already said, I want to say another thing that really concerns me is I'm reading that OnlyFans, uh, most of the membership happens to be heterosexual men, and not only are they doing this for momentary gratification, but they're forming deep emotional connections with these women. And it's actually oh replacing, <laughs> it's actually replacing real life intimacy. And I think that why is that happening? Because to have a real relationship, it takes work. It takes selflessness. It takes self-reflection. And I think that if men are saying, well, you know what? I'm going to bro it up with my boys all day. And then for my, for my sexual gratification, I'm going to talk to my girlfriend or OnlyFans. It, it can really severely uh, uh, implement their, their development, I think, especially if they're young. And obviously, I'm not a sex expert, so I would love to hear Michelle's take on how this is affecting intimacy and real life and real life connections. Michelle, I think you're on mute. I can't hear Michelle. Michelle's I on was mute. on mute. I was on mute. <laughs> Sorry about that. First of all, OnlyFans is not the problem. The problem is we have not, as a society, really educated ourselves to my to what you did say because you did say something important that that these men are getting involved in deep emotional uh, connections with these people that is also why some people are upset because let's be honest some of those men on those only fans pages might not have the skills which takes me back to my first point we're not keep giving people the skill set to really be able to connect and maybe for some of them that's the best place for them right we live in a superficial world we keep saying there's somebody for everybody, but everybody isn't into that somebody. So that's how some people are into on OnlyFans, and that's fine, okay? But there are some individuals who are probably being taken advantage of, to some extent, by the OnlyFans uh, creators. They know that it is, it, once the money stops, the honey gonna stop, if you know what I'm saying, okay? Yeah. So when it comes, but yes, People do have problems creating intimacy and relationships. I look at porn, and I don't know how graphic some of these OnlyFans pages are, but to what you're saying, Selena, yes, this can put a wrinkle in people's abilities to connect with actual humans. Um, however, I would be inclined to believe that the people that are and have been going to OnlyFans probably did not have the skill sets prior to. And that is how they got there in the first place. I don't. Oh, but. I want to make a point to this because Male J spoke to this with me specifically. Plus, wanting your point, Michelle, he said that the reason. And again, reminder: he's a cam worker. He said the reason that he doesn't have an OnlyFans. One, it's not his niche. But two like the social connection and communication is so different. Like he literally forms relationships with his clients that come back to him and like, you know, know him as a human being and they tip him out. Like some of the guys he gets, like they have that repertoire or something like together and only fans to him feel super disconnected. He even said like, when you're posting, you're just posting like to whoever, you know, and you're trying to like create this like, you know, you mentioned girlfriend experience. You're trying to have that, but for a wide platform and he doesn't like that. That's why he doesn't want to do it because he feels like part of the experience with camming that he likes is being able to specifically communicate with the other person. Like they have to ask for what they want and he has to be able to give it. And it's a back and forth that you don't really get on OnlyFans. Ooh. Just for, so to move the conversation along, what kind of impact it, like will and has OnlyFans and other cam sites like this had on sex work as a whole? Now, I want Michelle to answer that question if she can. You're, you're on mute. Here you go. I keep, 
I keep trying to be respectful. Um, so here's the deal. Sex work has shifted dramatically since the um, changes of Sostra and Fostra laws, okay? Um, should sex work be legalized? I would say yes. Um, I think it, it needs to, that's my opinion. I think that the current laws by getting rid of things like Backpage, like Craigslist, have created some areas in which sex work becomes more unsafe because it, like the Reddit kind of conversations where sex workers could talk to each other about who was dangerous Johns. I think that's really important to speak about. I also think that um, people who were privileged enough to be able to use the internet, because we had kind of mentioned that there are some who don't even have access to an OnlyFans or getting an OnlyFans a page set up and they're still street sex workers, which I'm very familiar with. Oftentimes trans women fall into this category mm -hmm. and we have to protect our trans sisters because they are dying at a very, very alarming rates, even during the pandemic. Okay. Um, so I think that there is that I have gotten in, I have had words with many a privileged sex worker, um, some more aggressive conversations than others. <laughs> because I think it is an important to realize that there is a privileged space of sex work where people have college degrees, they have advanced degrees, and they make a choice to go into sex work, which is totally cool, I totally support them, but I oftentimes wanna push the social injustices that occur in sex positive spaces and the racist ideas that occur in sex positive spaces, whether it's polyamory, sex work, uh, swingers parties, sex toy companies, whatever the case may be, it is a very white driven industry. And oftentimes black and brown people in the work are heavily exploited, oftentimes taken advantage of, and really just disenfranchised in the space. So when we talk about should sex work be legalized? How are things like OnlyFans impacting sex work? Once again, it's creating racial and economic disparities in the industry itself, period, mm -hmm. point blank, right? So, Selena, I know you had a comment. You want to go ahead with that? Yes. Yeah, so Robert Gonzalez says, uh, OnlyFans, honestly, just to me, doesn't make sense. It seems like desperation on both parts. I'm sorry if that's disrespectful. And the reason why I wanted to talk about that was because I honestly think that if you're gonna talk about sex work and we're gonna talk about OnlyFans, we need to talk about the level of desperation that many people feel that and the reason why they're going into it, especially young people. Like more, because young people are out of work, my concern is that they're turning to this because of desperation and not choice. And I think that if we're having like wider conversations about it, like the industry itself is very stigmatized. It is very hard work. And I do think that OnlyFans is trivializing the industry at whole, especially for those who are street wo street workers. But I think that, you know, like what Cardi B said, she's very transparent about her previous previous work as a stripper and in sex, sex work. But she also said, I would not tell my daughter to do it. Why? Because she saw how harsh that reality could be. She She lived on that side. So I think that, like, when we have these conversations, we need to talk about the, the gravity of it, the severity of it, and, and how it, it's not just, to me, I don't think it's something that can just be glamorized. I think that it is a very, a lot of people, at least from my understanding, that have ended up doing sex work did it because they were trans and they got kicked out and they needed some place to live. They were, you know, a young girl from a family that did not accept them doing certain things. And this is how they end up there. I mean, I, I can't, I know white women who have Ivy League degrees that chose to leave the industry and cho cho chose to be a sex worker, right? You know, I can say- They exist as well. It, there's a lot of them, a lot of them. And so oftentimes I think that sex work is something that has been going on since the dawn of time. It will always be here. It is always going to be around. And I've seen some of the comments come through trying to compare like sex work is commodifying your body as a product and then saying dating and marriage is not the same. I would disagree. Marriage is a legal financially binding contract. Valid. That if you look at the history of marriage, it was a woman's body 
being commodified as a product in which a father could sell to another man. Okay, so please don't tell me that there is not some type of parallel because there is. Now, if somebody choose to liberate, to liberate themselves, and of course, I wouldn't tell no young girls or no young boys or have to have somebody be exposed to sex work if they are young because anybody under 18, they cannot choose to be a sex worker. It is only by force, whether Selena, like you said, it's systemic or whether it's brought on by an individual. You cannot be a sex worker under 18 by choice, okay? Now, remember there's a lot of different forms of sex work. I was a dancer, right? I'd have no problem, to, similarly to Cardi B, I didn't become a superstar rapper, but I'm still to some extent in sex work because my income and everything I do is rooted in sexuality. That goes back to the spectrum of sex work. So let's normalize the idea that sexuality is a part of our everyday life and it is not something that is far off or altruistic, or it is not something that is, oh, something that should be kept in behind closed doors. It is a part of being human. So if you choose to make your money off of your body in whatever type of commodification you choosing to do it, that's fine. If you're a young person, my hope is that somebody educates you to the risks and the rewards and the truth of what it is, I'm not saying young people should get into it, but I started dancing at 18. What, do I think I was old enough? Do I think I knew what I was stepping into? No, I'll never forget the day an older woman who had been a stripper for a long time looked at me and said, Michelle, well, that wasn't my name, but was like, girl, the hardest step in this rat race is not on the stage, but it is off. And when I first got in the game, I didn't know what it meant. But after seven years, oh, I knew what it meant because you get addicted to the fast money. And so OnlyFans is no different. You just continue to up the ante of what you're willing to do. Same as porn until you choose to get off the Ferris wheel. Michelle, just two more things. Um, Sorry, if I, again. I'm no, this is, this is, I'm, I'm loving this conversation. I think we all are. Mm -hmm. um, so I've been seeing a lot of comments in the chat on Facebook Live and in a Zoom saying like, well, particularly one person who said their mother was worried that if you legalize sex work, it will put more people in danger. Right. And other people said, if you legalize sex work, it, would, it can make them safer. Is there a universe where we can legalize sex work in a way that protects the directly impacted workers? Yes, we've seen it. The Bunny Ranch, right? And, and it was in Vegas. Like, there was a whole show. I'm not saying that those women was, like, living their best lives, but they were choosing to be there. We've seen it done in Europe. Mm -hmm. We've seen it done in Germany. Mm -hmm. And some of these places have the lowest STI rates, the fucking the lowest HIV rates. They have a lot less domestic violence. Listen, New York State is talking about decriminalizing sex work. I'm concerned with that because there's a difference between legalizing and decriminalizing. If you decriminalize something, you're saying, I'm going to turn a blind eye to what's happening here. But on the back end of that, it's not guaranteeing that there'll be support, support services. If you legalize it, then you are required by law to think about the repercussions of what this may be. So yes to legalization. Legalization with protections for all people, not just from Johns, but from the fucking system as well. Mm. Can I just say to Michelle's point that big ups to the difference between criminalization and legalization because from an organizer slash activist standpoint like when you have something legalized that's when you can get policy protections in place like we have a lot of states and i hate to make this comparison but i just keep thinking about it we have a lot of states that have decriminalized marijuana and then there aren't proper protocols for like business establishment, minority protection. There aren't even talks about like getting people with low level offenses out of jail. But because it's been legalized, now we can have those conversations and put forth those policies. So it's very important to make sure that we're doing the work to talk about legalization so that girls and guys in the industry can get the protection they need. People who are seeking sex work services can, from the consumer affairs perspective, get the protections that they need. And that we can talk about how to do this safely and effectively instead of 
you know, in shady backdoor ways. Thank you. Michelle, so we do have to start, we do have to start wrapping up this conversation. Um, can you please let all of our listeners know how they can hear more from you? There we go. Unmute. I always do the mute thing. Um, so you guys can all follow me and I invite you to join the party. It's not an OnlyFans page, but we still have fun. That's going to be <laughs> at MH Sexpert on all social media <laughs> platforms. I do try to go live, but as I mentioned, you know, working in the sex game for as long as I have, sometimes you get tired of telling people your business. <laughs> well, I don't really talk about my own personal business, but still it's personal topics, but please follow me at MH Sexpert. Also, I am going to share this. I have started a GoFundMe page for survivors of domestic violence through mm. this pandemic. If you have $5, if you have $10, if you have $3, go to the GoFundMe page. I am giving out micro grants. I raised about $9,000. I have a, over 180 applications I'm trying to go through and get survivors support services because sometimes during shelter and home orders and social distancing, home is not the safest place for you. It's also April. We're coming out of Sexual Assault Awareness Month. So please follow me, keep up with me, send me your questions. Please don't send dick pics. Uh, and I'm out here, people. Thank you again for having me. Thank you so much, Michelle. You are, you are great. You're Amazing. my new favorite person, just saying. And I got a second what, Rach what Rachel says. You're a treasure. You're a national treasure. <laughs> Thank you for the education <laughs> and the work yeah, that was. you do. Thank you so much for that, Michelle. Thank you so much. So I want to bring it on to the panel now so we can, can get our closing statements. This has been a really good conversation. Um, learned a lot. Tammy, do you have any final thoughts? Final thoughts, legalize sex work. And um, in regards to the OnlyFans conversation, let's remember to look into ways to support sex workers on the ground who don't have the technological privilege to join OnlyFans. Look into rent relief funds for domestic violence survivors, i.e. through Michelle, um, and do your research. You know, there's a lot of people out there in the industry that are hurting right now. Let's not assume that OnlyFans is going to save everybody. Selena, so final thoughts on this conversation? Yeah, no, I thought it was a great discussion to have. I think that, um, you know, it, it's a conversation that needs to continue to be had. Um, I know there's a lot of, you know, controversy around it, but I think that with discussion, we can come to uh, a better places of understanding with each other. Sex work is work, period. And if we keep on acting like if there's a problem with sex or being sexual or having sexuality, we're going to keep on going down the path that emphasizes and encourages violence against women, that stigmatizes people for enjoying like their own natural desires, and that creates an industry that even though we know that a lot of people are doing it, is done in the shadows and puts lives in danger. I think we learned a lot today talking to Michelle and obviously with the wonderful Tammy and Selena about the way that sex work looks right now, the way that it's happening through OnlyFans and other cam networks, and the way that it happens in a very diverse industry. Moving forward, guys, like let's keep on using this as an opportunity to learn and to have courageous conversations. Until then, we'll be here doing this good old podcast conversation.